In this video, we're going to give reverse coloring a try. Hey y'all, I'm Drake and welcome to Drake Makes Art. So the easiest way to think about what reverse coloring is, is to think about what normal coloring is. So a normal coloring sheet has a white sheet of paper with black lines on it, and then you go in and add the color. A reverse coloring sheet already has the color on it, but it has no lines, and so you go in and add the lines. Hence, reverse, because it's backwards from what you would normally do. So, in today's video, I'm going to create three reverse coloring sheets from scratch, starting with a blank sheet of paper, and then watercoloring some color onto them, and then finally adding the line work on top of them. With this first piece, I wasn't even trying to make a piece at all. I was just going to use this top sheet of my watercolor pad as my swatch paper while I was wetting my paints, but then I started painting and the art just kind of happened. As I was painting, I realized that the shapes I was making flowed together to create a bird flying through the air. So I leaned into that and relied on light, straight brush strokes to create the texture of feathers ruffling in the wind, trying to really capture that moment of high speed flight. Now for this second piece, I knew exactly what I wanted to paint. My wife really loves owls, so I thought it would be fun to paint her a picture of an owl sitting in a tree. I started off by mixing a warm brown and used short dabbing brush strokes to create the feather effect. I mixed up a yellower brown for the beak, then took my original brown a shade darker to create the feathers around the eyes and the horns. I realize now as I'm editing that I painted his eyes a little wonky, one of them is bigger than the other. But you know, that's the thing with reverse coloring, the lines go on last, so I didn't have any sketch lines got down to guide me. When I finished the head, I thought about adding some feet for the owl to grip the tree branch with, but ultimately decided to just cover them up with the branch. I mixed some red and black into my brown to give the wood a dark warmth, and finally added some blue to the mix to wash the night sky in the background. For my third page, I wanted to try something different. One of my favorite things about working with watercolor is how the paint flows over the page as the water moves. So for this last piece, I decided to experiment with some wet on wet techniques. I started out by coating the whole page with clear water, then used the brightest colors I have in my palette. 
I had absolutely no plan and no expectation as to what this piece was going to look like, and that was honestly part of the fun. Watching the paint spread and mix and flow all over the page was probably one of the most satisfying things I've seen in a long time. So now it is the next day and I laid all of the pieces out underneath my vinyl collection so that the weight of all the records would flatten the paper out. So let's go see what they look like now that they're dry. Coming back to these dry, I knew that the colors would be lighter, but I'm so happy with the way these turned out so far. I love the feathers on the owl piece. Those turned out way better than I thought they would because I don't really paint birds all that often, so painting feathers isn't something I get to do a whole lot. I am also just so incredibly happy about the way the abstract piece turned out. Look at those, look like, look at these flow patterns. Look at them. They look so cool. I honestly couldn't be happier with these so far, and I cannot wait to start putting line work over them. So starting with my accidental bird, I kind of wanted to capture the idea of high speed flight. So once I did the basic outlining of the shapes, I decided to cover the entire background with lines representing the airflow around the bird. So at the back under the wings, there's a lot of little curlicues and twists to represent how the air is being disrupted by this bird flying through. And then the rest of the page is covered in these long unbroken lines that are kind of reminiscent of the airstream in a wind tunnel. Next, I decided to lean into the wonkiness of the owl. Yes, one of his eyes is bigger than the other, but you know what, that's okay. We're gonna make it work. And I decided the best way to do that was to give the piece a cartoony vibe. So I pulled out my thickest brush pens for the line work on this piece. I used the same dabbing technique I used in the watercolor to create the feather texture, and looking at the finished product, I actually kind of love it. I think it turned out way better than I was expecting.
Now, I struggled with the abstract piece. I sat at the table for like 10 minutes before I turned on the camera trying to figure out what I was going to do with it. I tried turning it around in a few different orientations, but I just couldn't figure out how I was going to approach it. Eventually I decided to just start drawing lines and see what happened, and I'm really glad that I did because it was just so much fun watching this picture emerge from the color. I'm not quite sure what it is. I think it might be some kind of fire versus water battle or dance or maybe a dance battle thing, but I really love it. I honestly think it might be my favorite of the three. And here are the completed pieces all together. I'm really interested to know which one of these was your favorite, so please let me know in the comments. Or if you hop over to my Instagram page at Drake Makes Art with underscores in between the words, that's Drake underscore makes underscore art. Um, I've posted pictures of these, and you can like those posts to let me know which one you like best. Uh, also, if you're interested in seeing more of my process and want to like see the art as it's being made live, you can follow my Facebook page at facebook.com slash drakemakesart. That's where I post a lot of behind the scenes content, usually in real time as I'm in the middle of making. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time when we make something new. Bye!